Hey everyone, Cody here. And sometimes as an artist, it can feel a little isolating. Like you're just kind of doing this thing. You're creating this art, you know, you're creating these pieces and you're kind of a one man army or, you know, you're just kind of this, this island who is creating things. And, you know, oftentimes as artists, we're kind of isolated because we're creating something that feels absolutely unique, but also we have to kind of do everything. I mean, we have to plan what we're going to create and then we have to create it and then we have to then market that thing and you know if you're selling you know physical pieces then you have to ship those pieces and you have to kind of keep track of all of the you know the financial aspects of it so it can be very daunting but the reason i'm here today is because i'd like to do something where and it's an idea that i've had for quite some time and if you hear any background noise it's my little kitten that i love and she is just messing around so anyway but one thing that i always kind of wanted to do with this channel that i never really kind of got a chance to do was to promote other artists and i had my website you know i let that website expire that's why i no longer have it but uh you know one thing that i kind of started doing on there that i wanted to really do was promote other artists that i thought were you know fascinating you know maybe they had cool stories or maybe they had some some really cool art and <clears throat> so that is something that i wanted to do so today i found an artist that actually came up on my youtube feed so i've never seen this guy before um and his videos actually started just coming up on my youtube feed i think youtube is kind of pushing smaller creators a little bit more into people's feeds and i think that's great um, i've seen a couple of clips of this guy's uh work the name on here is just Jay Wayne, so I'm not sure. But uh, we'll watch this video together because I kind of want to see how he goes about creating the art. I have not seen this video yet. And um, I will go ahead and link to you know his channel in the description if you like the video. That way you can kind of go and support him. He has, at this time, uh, less than 100 subscribers. So you know if, if you guys like this video and you like the style of art that he does, maybe you can check him out. And, and get him a few more subscribers. So if I can use this platform for for good and, and to support my fellow creators, um, then I want to do that. So let's watch the video. Now, I did start the video and it already had music in it. I don't know if it's copyright claim type music, um, but I'm just going to play the video anyway, and then we'll just kind of discuss it while he's painting and, and just kind of do like an analysis and kind of a fun viewing party if you will of another artist's work and kind of you know just to also expand kind of your ideas on you know the types of art that you can create so it is also uh, abstract expressionism so that's also why i'm doing it because it is in a similar kind of niche as to the work that i did so i'm going to switch over to the computer and then we'll go ahead and take a look and uh <laughs> it's interesting that he has this it's so funny because that's kind of like an old school thing that you used to see five to ten years ago with, you know, some of these, uh, you know, gaming channels. You'd see like these really <laughs> kind of dynamic intros with the glowing aspect. Now, I'm not knocking them. I, I just think it's kind of interesting that people still use those animated intros. That was a huge thing like five, ten years ago. Anyway, before we even go any further, I love this. So you can see that he has a, kind of sketched out an idea of the kind of the framework of what he's trying to create in this painting. So based on the sketch, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's, uh, you know, it, and it says surface up. So I'm assuming that what we have here is like a beach scene uh, with waves and then maybe a pier or buildings or something. I guess we'll find out more. Another thing that I actually never really did um, was you can see over here that he has paint on the table. This is actually a more common thing than I knew of before. And having these paints on the table uh, allows you to just uh, quickly access them. Now, 
the caveat here is that this is all acrylic paint, right? It's not gloss enamel like I used. Um, but with acrylic paint, you know, if you're in a cool environment, it's not going to dry right away. You could do this. Another advantage to doing this, or if you have a large wide surface that you can use, is that you can kind of mix the colors right then and there. So you can take a little bit, you can scoop some with, you know, the palette knife like he's using here, and then scoop a little bit from another color, and then kind of mix them right there on the table, and then scrape them up and put them on the painting. So there is another advantage there. Um, I'm assuming this bucket over here is for water next to him. And then behind him, he has this frame. Now, I love this, and I really wish that I had come up with something like this, but I just don't have the patience or the time to do it. Now, it is an excuse to some extent, but also I just never wanted to do it, right? So this frame that you see in the background, I'm assuming, is for his... Uh, like for vertical paintings that he does or if he hangs them up and, and does them you know from the side as opposed to top down um, you know he probably has little screws in those beams that he can hang the canvas on to paint it you know vertically as opposed to you know painting it downward um, and I would assume with this uh, this water bottle here over on the right that he does kind of these abstract things where he also sprays it and has the water drip down and, and you know kind of thins it out that way so a lot of assumptions here but I, I i feel pretty confident but let's go ahead and uh play the video okay you can see exactly what i was just talking about so he is pulling some of these colors um and he's kind of spreading them out so uh, probably a sunset i mean if i had to guess i could be wrong of course and it is abstract so you never quite know um, but yeah, he went really heavy on the red. Um, and then I'm assuming he has the brush because the palette knife is going to mix those paints. If he keeps using the same palette knife as pulling those colors, it's going to keep mixing them. Um, with the brush, he can get a little bit more, um, you know, he can kind of angle it better to get just that one color than, you know, putting those colors together because they're so close now you also know that he did exactly what i was talking about he picked up some of the yellow i picked up some of the white and put that on the side so that uh you know he can kind of get a lighter yellow out of that uh he also sprayed it a little bit that's going to give him you know just a little bit of longevity uh so to speak in stretching that paint especially for a base layer uh adding a little bit of water isn't going to kill it um, because you're really just trying to kind of cover the surface. Again, I don't know his painting style, but that's a, I'm assuming he's going for. Yeah, now he's just kind of picking up the rest of the paint. Uh, he is kind of throwing the paint a little bit. I That might just be for dramatic effect. I'm not sure if there is, uh, if this is the only layer here, then it makes sense. But if there's going to be another layer on top, I'm not sure how much of that splash you'll see. I guess we'll have to kind of watch it to, to find out. I also don't truly know what he sketched that out with. I'm going to assume charcoal, maybe. Um, I, I really don't know what he did his little sketch with. And maybe somebody can tell me or, you know, maybe he can see this video and, and let me know. Um, but I don't know if it's something that's uh, super thick that's going to show up underneath the paint or if, uh, if it's something that will kind of dissolve over time. So it's just kind of temporary, and then you won't see it once the painting is done. I'm actually a hunt. I'm, I'm really not sure about that one. Uh, so it looks like, okay, so, yeah, he mixed it right there on the edge. Uh, looks like he just mixed kind of some of that remaining orange and white, and he's working it in. So you can see that he's kind of fanning it, this is both to get that smooth look right there in the corner, but also because he's mixing those colors with the brush. So he's just kind of working them in here um, to kind of really give it a little bit of balance because not only are you mixing the colors on the table, but you're also mixing the colors that are already on, you know, the, the canvas itself so that, you know, it creates a very vibrant, cohesive piece. Yeah, so I am assuming that these are the waves, or this is the water, so to speak, uh, since he's adding the blue at the bottom. And then he's going to work the blue in, yeah. 
I probably wouldn't have put the blue there, but that's just me because I like kind of keeping a lot of my colors separated. Um, that's one of the things I hated about doing scraped paintings is that over scraping made those colors muddy and I hated that. Um, and that looks like he's just kind of flicking it for a little bit of dramatic flair, which is, you know, that's cool. It's fine. I really do. The one thing I, I will say that I really admire about acrylic paint that I kind of never, because I didn't use a lot of acrylic, I used way more gloss enamel. Uh, acrylic you can do a little bit more with in terms of, you know, stacking the layers or kind of mixing it in um, or, you know, just getting more color out of mixing it before it kind of muddies or you know taints basically um i do kind of like the splashes there um I, I i'm gonna have to wait to see like what the end product is and here he's just kind of using some of the leftover paints which again you can see that he's mixed these paints a couple of times and they haven't turned you know dark brown yet it looks like he's got a little bit of it at the top but again this just happens if you keep adding if you keep mixing those colors too much then they start to you know muddy and then turn brown so it happens with no matter what type of paint you use it doesn't matter if it's acrylic oil uh gloss and it really doesn't matter it will all do that in the end if you mix it too much and it doesn't matter if you're using a scraper or a brush or whatever now, he is kind of pulling it out. You can see that it turned brown. There's no brown on this table. I don't think there was. But it, over on the right side where he's at, you know, you can see that it turned brown because of that. Because of all of that extra mixing. Ooh, this is a seizure warning. Probably should have said something. <laughs> a little bit of flashing lights. I was not expecting that. Um, but I like that. That was a nice uh, little splash. Now, the problem with acrylic is that in order to really get it to move when you flick it, you either have to use a lot of water or you have to use something like flow medium to get it to move. Okay. He used uh okay, I didn't see what he used. I'm gonna go back just a little bit to see if I can see what he used there. I think it was right after this. Okay. Alright. So here he's using uh an edged, like a notched drywall trowel. So if you want to know what that is, that's uh, yeah, it's a notched edge, uh, drywall trowel. So you can get them at like Home Depot or whatever. Some of them have like a flat side on one side and then like ridges on the other. So you can get them and use, you know, either side. But they're, you know, a few bucks, super cheap. Now, actually, actually let's talk about this. So I have done this technique here. I have put these waves into paintings and I have done that. Personally, I don't like it. <laughs> it's just that's just a preference thing. I don't like this little wavy thing. Again, that's just me. Not saying anything against him. And I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see that it has different style notches on it too. Now, you know, it being close to the end of the video, there's not a whole lot left. And I want to tell you something, okay? If you've painted, and I, I, I saw this I saw this comment. I, I actually saw this comment a lot when I used to paint. Is you should have stopped. Or I liked it at, you know, this timestamp. You should have stopped then. Let me tell you something. This, this little movement that he did, okay? Where he, after he puts on... He puts on the paint, right? He does it kind of slowly here. Now watch his, like, kind of step back, look, considers, and then adds. This little, just in this few seconds, I, I know exactly what he's feeling right now. Because you're kind of, like, tabulating. Should I add more or is it done? The problem with abstract art is that it is easy to make. But it's also easy to mess up because you kind of don't, sometimes you as the artist don't know if it's done or not. And it's those those moments of, is it done? That, you know, can kind of go either way, right? It's like a coin flip. So him kind of stepping back and like looking at it, I've been there and, and every artist probably knows this. Is it done? You know, is it good enough or is it finished? 
so it's just funny to see someone else do that because because I know exactly how he feels, but apparently it wasn't done because he's adding to it. And there's going to be people like, oh, he should have stopped at this point. But you know, every artist kind of goes through that where we don't know when to stop sometimes, and sometimes it makes it better, sometimes it makes it worse. It's just kind of the nature of the game. Like this is a interesting little kind of wave that he's adding here. And and personally, I don't think it needed it, but I, I, I get it. I can respect it. All right, so we got less than a minute left here on the painting. Okay, so here he's just painting the edges. Um, I'll just talk about this real quick too. This is a big question that I got when I was painting. You know, what do I do with the edges? It's personal preference. It truly, truly is personal preference. I know so many professional artists, as in they do this for a living, and they do it all kinds of different ways. So one guy that I really respect, he he actually stretches his own canvas. So his paintings are you know from edge to edge, and then he stretches them over a frame himself. Um, another artist that I know, you know, he paints all of the edges of his paintings black, and that's so that it just looks, you know, nice and professional. I know a lady that uh, she doesn't paint the edges. She's like, nope. Um, you know, I think that the roughness of the painting, you know, kind of adds to it being art. I don't know. That was her justification. I couldn't get behind that, so I didn't do that. Um, and then there was another lady that actually built a frame for every one of the paintings she sold. Uh, she actually put a little frame around it. So I think that that is like the most professional way to do it. Now, most people probably don't have the time for that or the, the resources or something. If you're selling them for a lot of money, I think the frame route is the way to go. But if you're looking for kind of a cost effective way, I did it both with black paint, but also with the colors of the painting. So if I had a lot of paint left over or the paint was kind of already dripping down the sides of the painting, um, then I would just use the paint of the painting and just paint the sides uh, those colors so it kind of tied in nicely. So even if you're looking from the side, you can see that it kind of goes with it. Um, and then other times, if a lot of the painting was just on the face of the painting and it didn't really drip down the sides or, you know, I didn't have like a good solid color base to use for the sides, then I would just paint it black. So quite simply, either one uh, works, you know, painting it black or using the colors of the painting, or you could just not paint it or frame it, whatever you want to do. It's personal preference, but that's just what I did. It looks like yeah, he is going the route of using the colors of the painting, which is, which is understandable. And it looks like he got a little bit on the painting. I hate that. I hate when that happens. That happened to me all the time. Um, if you use too, like, too big of a brush, then that will happen where you'll kind of like, you'll go to do the sides and then paint will ooze on to the face of it. Um, so I wonder if the, uh, the notch is supposed to represent the sun or currents or something. I, I don't know. And I think that's it. Okay, yeah, he has, he has some, some kind of outro or something. Um, I'll leave it right here. So ultimately, I, I think it's a cool painting. Um, I think that for me personally, uh, the waves are a little much or, or they're kind of disjointed. So I think if they were kind of maybe tied in a little more or it was more splashes, again, this is just personal for me. I'm not saying anything against the painting itself, saying it's, it's bad or he should do anything different. He has his own style, but ultimately I really love the colors and I like the composition. So I think if, uh, you know, it's a little kind of all over the place for, for me, and that's saying something, you know, having created Pollock style paintings and, and these scrape paintings, but even my own paintings, I could, you know, say that I didn't like, or I could even judge my own paintings. So it's not like I'm saying that all of my stuff was great. Uh, but ultimately I, I think it's cool. I, I like it. And, um, I haven't watched all of his other videos, but if you like this video and you want to support him, like I said, I will put a link in the description area below so you can check out more of uh, Jay's work. And that's pretty much it. If you guys have anyone else you want me to take a look at or 
if you have art, you can share it with me on Instagram. I am on Instagram. It's just Instagram.com slash Cody Schwabe. Um, or you can comment it in the comment section. And, you know, if I can get a chance, I'll try to take a look and we'll look at some more artists. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. God bless. Bye, guys.